Hey guys, and uh, thanks for joining us again for our second last week of Strong In Him, which is our first unit of, we've actually got four units of our e-discipleship course, but this is the first unit, and uh, this is uh, the second last week, and I'm so glad that you could join us um, once again, and uh, bless you guys, we're going to get straight into it tonight, we're talking about um, we're talking about how to hear his voice, okay? And we're talking about the importance of that and, uh, and everything that goes along with it. How to hear his voice, how does God speak, um, and uh, how can we recognize his voice um, speaking into our lives and, and to our family and friends' lives, you know, through us. So, uh, bless you guys. I hope you're having a good one. I hope I'm seeing you on the chat box. And, uh, yeah, yeah, what a, what, a, what a great day it is today. All right. Let's get into it. Okay, so um, here's the first thing I want to start. John chapter 10, verse 27. This is really important. This is, this is, kind of, this is you know, when we talk about discipleship, when we talk about being a follower of, of Jesus, um, hearing his voice is actually one of the fundamental things that we need to uh, be able to do in our, in our walk with God. This is not a... This is not an optional, op- you know, uh, an, an option. This is not an extra. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm trying to say. It's not an option, all right. But this is uh, this is something that is just actually just one of the fundamental parts of being a believer. Um, it says this in John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep listen to my voice. In uh, if I just backpedal a little bit, verse 14. Says, I'm the good shepherd. This is Jesus talking. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Isn't that brilliant news that He does that for us? Uh, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, um, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And so we're talking here about uh, the Gentiles and, and, uh, and and the and Israel, all those that would believe in him, but they but here's the important thing: those sheep do hear his voice. So you know, sometimes we look at uh, you know, there's that that passage in one Corinthians, and if you want to just jump over to that one Corinthians uh, chapter twelve, it talks about the spiritual gifts, which we are going to talk a bit more in detail in um, our next unit, but. It talks about the spiritual gifts, uh, verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the, the Spirit of the message of wisdom. And it goes on to talk about these different gifts. I don't think it's an exhaustive list, but Paul's making a point. There's a whole bunch of different types of gifts, and God gives them out to whoever he wants to give them out to, just as he determines them. In verse 11, uh, uh, well, I'm, verse 10 I'll say, uh, To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, which is which is uh, in, in a way hearing God's voice, but but it's not complete, completely that. Um, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another interpretation. But all these are the work of the one and the same spirit. And, he, and this is the important bit here. He gives them to each one as he determines. All right, so this would, he's talking about spiritual gifts here in this particular point in time. And he's talking about, you know, in verse 12, we talk about, well, the body is... is, is is you know uh, made up of many parts, and uh, not all parts of the body do all the functions that a body needs to do. You know your legs don't go to the toilet. <laughs> your leg, your leg helps you walk around. You know your leg, your, your arms help you to do certain things. Your kidneys help you to do certain things. Your eyes help you to see. Your nose helps you to smell. All that kind of stuff. And so that's what he's talking about here. But when we're talking about prophecy. Part of that is hearing from God, but the other part of that is actually speaking out and declaring what what God has said. And so, prophecy is as a you know, it, yes, it is about um, hearing from God, but it also is a special gift about hearing from God uh, for others and and being able to declare it over their lives and, and the lives of the church and and all that kind of stuff. But hearing God's voice for yourself. This is, and this is really important. Hearing God's voice for yourself, and hearing, you know, about your own life and your own relationship with Him, and and things that are going on uh, for you, um, is is crucial as a believer. So these are things that you know. It's it's yes, we 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 need to hear His voice, and and God has given us. Sorry about that. The ability the ability to hear His voice 
and uh, if we if we we um, seek that, um, we'll be able to hear his voice. So be encouraged; you can do it. Um, just on prophecy, it does say though uh, in chapter fourteen, one Corinthians, it says to um, follow the follow the way of love, which obviously love is the most important thing, and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. So, so that that aspect of hearing God and declaring it out, and uh, you know, is something that we all should be desiring, um, because Paul here writes, you know, this is a really good thing. Desire it. You know, you can't make God give it to you, but desire it. And uh, be open to receiving that, and uh, and 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 you know build your faith so that 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 um that you you know expect that God's going to do something miraculous in your life in terms of prophecy. All right, here we go. Um, but I just want to say, be still and know that I'm God. Psalm 46, verse 10, a beautiful, beautiful psalm. And in verse 10, it says, be still and know that I'm God. And we talked a little bit about that on Sunday, and hopefully I'll have the video up of Sunday's message uh, soon. But we're talking about intimacy with God. And that see, when it said, be still, um, part of that was just stop trying. You know, stop trying. Give it up. Relax. And then it says, and no, and that no word is yada, the same word that is used for intimacy between human relationships where we talk about, you know, Adam, yada, Eve, and they had kids. And uh, so we're talking about this is a close relationship. This is be still, be give, kind of give it up in your own strength and just kind of and wait on him, just be still, look for him, look to him, and know, in other words, have, rela have close, intimate, deep, personal intimacy with me and that will help you know with with God right does that kind of make sense that's what, be still and know that I'm God be still and enter into a relationship with me and 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 when you do that we, we get peace that passes all understanding we become more and more like him we become more and more supernatural in in the things that he asks us to do and and the things that we get to do um, we we lead more people to Christ. We, you know, we, we we get excited about giving money away. There's a whole bunch of different things that happen when we have a deeper and more intimate relationship with Him. All right, so that's Psalm 46 verse 10. I'll put down the links down the bottom as usual. All right, love to hear your thoughts, your questions, and uh, that would be great. Chuck them on the the chat box. All right, so. Um, so we need to eagerly. We want to eagerly desire that we can have faith. We can expect this is actually one of the most fundamental parts of being a believer is actually hearing His voice and then following Him because we can hear His voice. Okay. So if He says that we can hear His voice, well then we can. And uh, sometimes, uh, and we're going to get into this in, in just a little while. But you know, how do we hear God's voice? Like, well, here's the first thing: just be expectant. All right. Let's let's say, well, God has said we can hear His voice, so He's He's not going to say it. You know, if if we can't do it, you know, as a, as a music teacher, I don't give pieces of music to my to my students who they can't, you know, they can't play that song, you know, like so. I'm not going to give them a piece of music that's five time five levels higher than their ability because, you know, what would be the point of that, you know? So I say, okay, let's give this song a go, you know. And sometimes the students, say, oh, it's too hard, it's too hard. Well, I wouldn't give it to you if, if I thought it was too hard. And so we have a go, and we actually, when we work down, sit through it, and have a go at it, where we really have a go at it, the the students find, oh, actually, I can play this song. That's that's incredible. And so it's the same thing. God does stuff like that for us. God says, you know, this thing that I want you to do, and we go, whoa, that's crazy, that's ridiculous. When Jesus said to feed the 5,000 people, the disciples are like, are you kidding me? What's going on, you know? And uh, when, when when Jesus said to Peter, come on out, you know, walk walk with me on the on the water, and, he, and, you know, Peter got out of the boat, well, he did it, you know? So these are the things that he actually asks us to do and uh, says we can do, and it's because um, we can. We can trust him because he's trustworthy, <laughs> all right? So, how do we hear God's voice? Um, actually, well, I'll talk about, let's I'll just backtrack, talk about different ways that we can hear God's voice. Uh, number one is through His Word, all right? Generically, through His Word. In other words, generically, through this book, through this book, we have the actual 
words of of God written down to us, you know, written by people inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. It's a wonderful scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16. So we see that this is, you know, that the Bible's actually there, you know, as God's word to us. So as we read his word, he is speaking to us. Now, he's not necessarily speaking directly to our situation, that circumstance, right that very second, um, but he does speak to us through his word, all right? And so remember, we talked about the word in, in um, I think it was the first week, actually, you know, the Bible in the first week. We, we need to remember context, you know, what's the context, who, who was this originally written to, you know, what, what did it mean to them, what does it mean to us as a community now, and, and what does it mean to me personally? We, we, we need to think about those things as we read the scriptures. Sometimes God illuminates particular scriptures. Um, sometimes he, you know, just speaks to us generically through that. So, so that's the first thing I want to say. God speaks to us through um, the Word, through the Bible. All right, two Timothy three sixteen. He also speaks to us, um, and it's really kind. In in some ways, it's the, it's kind of the same thing. But Hebrews one, uh, Hebrews chapter one verses uh, one and two talks about how Jesus actually spoke to us. Um, uh, you know, and, and we've got those words written down for us as well. You know, so that's that's a really important. He, you know, God was revealed to us more in, in in more fullness and and depth when we when we saw Jesus, and and we've actually got the actual words of Jesus in the book of the Bible here for us. But we've also got pictures of him. I don't I don't mean like paintings. I mean, I mean, you know, as as we read the things that he did, we get to start. You know, we start to see who God really is when we look at Jesus. You know. So the way he had compassion on people, the way he taught, the way he, the way he ad addressed people who had um, issues with him, you know, a whole bunch of different things. We start to see this is God's heart, you know, how, how you know how he died for us. We get to you know we get to hear God's heart for us through that. So we and and that's obviously through the words still um, for us because we didn't live two thousand years ago and uh, get to see we didn't get to see Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount. We didn't get to see Jesus walking with his disciples and chatting and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But we do get to read about it and we do get to um, experience it in that way. All right, so number one, through the word. Number two, uh, well, well, actually, number one, part A, through the word. Number one, part B, is uh, through Jesus, right? Number two is uh, creation. God speaks to us in creation and Romans 1 20 talks about that and so I won't, I won't read that up just at the moment but you know as as you as you probably know that you know there's as you get out into nature as you get out in you know people talk about you know how close they feel um, with God you know that those that are Christians and non-Christians will, will talk about this kind of the the experience that they have uh, when there's a beautiful sunset you know or, or, or whatever so he does actually speak to us he's revealing himself to us through creation and again he will do that with specific things sometimes that he wants to say and sometimes it's just the incredible beauty that just says hey here i am now if you've you've seen that um louis giglio uh message how great is our god or indescribable the two of them actually if you want check it out check out the first one first indescribable and then check out how great is our god the um uh those two particular messages, mind-blowing to talk about, you know, space and the human body, the way God has put it all together. It's just incredible. I'll put a link down to that as well. It's just incredible at some point in time. Check that out. Um, so that's number number two. Number three is he, he speaks to us through people, other people. So particularly believers, he speaks to us through other believers, and uh, that's a great thing uh, when, when somebody hears from God on your behalf, you know. So if you're open, see how... Hearing God's voice is not necessarily like you, this big booming voice. Hello, this is God talking to you. You know, <laughs> I'm in an American accent there. Um, you know, he's he talks in so many ways. So if we are willing to to kind of realize that, then we'll find out that God is actually speaking a lot more than we realize. And uh, and and so he speaks to us um, through people. Now, a wonderful thing to think about is think about. Um, you know that sometimes people will get it wrong. So uh, when you when you receive a word from 
from somebody, you know, they've said, okay, I think this is what God is saying, or they, they may not say, I think, they might say, this is definitely the word of God. And uh, what you need to do as somebody who's receiving that, just go, thank you, I appreciate that, I'll pray about that, I'll think about that. Um, sometimes you take that to a friend or a pastor or, or somebody else and say, hey, this word was given to me, what do you think about that? You can do that. The other thing you can do is you can wait for confirmation. You know, so wait for um, somebody else to come and do that. Now, I know um, for for one of our kids, they just got three uh, prophetic words for them in this year, um, and each one of those words were pretty much identical, um, obviously said in different ways and different words, but they all meant exactly the same thing. And so um, for this particular um, uh, person in the family, uh, they're just like, wow, this is great. You know, God is speaking to me in this way. All right, so God speaks to us through people. God speaks to us through circumstances um, uh, is number four. So sometimes circumstances happen and God is speaking to us through that way. Sometimes it's miraculous. Sometimes it's just, you know, kind of coincidence kind of kind of stuff. Um, but God is trying to speak to us all the time if we're willing to listen. Um, just on the weekend, it was kind of, I think it was kind of fun, and I love how God is fun. Um, that as I was preaching, uh, I said there was a couple of things that happened as I preached, and I said something about the first fruits, <laughs> and I talked about the first fruit of intimacy with God is is hearing His voice, you know, is revelation, right? And so, and uh, which which you know, obviously this is relevant for tonight's um, message. But and as I said, the first fruits. Uh, Tony came out from the kitchen, bringing the first plate of fruit out into the kitchen, which was just, which was just awesome. It was just kind of fun. And then I spoke later with uh, Liam, and Liam was Liam was doing the um, the videoing of the message, and he said that as I talked about blurry lines uh, in terms of you know relationship with each other and, and and God and how you know we want to be so close with Him, we actually don't know where one starts and where the other. If that kind of sense. This is a blurred sort of thing. As I talked about that, he said that his his video camera um, went all out of focus and went blurry. And he said that um, that's never happened uh, before, <laughs> ever. And he said, I could not fix it. No matter what I tried to do, I could not fix it at that moment. I stopped talking about it and the and the video went back to normal. So when you check out that video, when we put that online sometime in the in the near future, Check that out. It's quite. It's quite fun. No editing has been done to make that happen. All right. I haven't seen it myself yet. Actually, I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. So through circumstances, God will speak to us. Sometimes it's incredible. Sometimes just those little things like, like, like that um, on the weekend. But it's just saying, you know, he's con he was confirming his message through a, a small sign and a, a small. And it makes you wonder, right? The, the signs and wonders. All right. Uh, number five, he he speaks to us directly through his um, through his spirit. So the Holy Spirit just directly speaks into our lives, whether that's um, in a audible voice where you know we literally hear it with we we hear God speak to us with our ears, just like Samuel did, um, just like a lot of uh, a lot of people have done in the past. Personally, I've not personally heard God's audible voice yet, and I'm going to say yet. Um, because I'm looking forward to um, sometime soon this side of eternity. Um, sometimes he'll speak to us in a, in a visitation. Now, a visitation in, in many ways is the same thing as an audible voice, except that um, you can actually see um, you know, um, God's presence as well. So um, it's not just his voice, but in fact him, um, his, his, you know, Jesus turning up in his in his bodily form, if that makes sense. All right, so there's a visitation sometimes, and it could be from an angel, you know, as well, a visitation of some sort where you can hear the voice of God being delivered to you. An angel just an angel actually just means messenger. So uh, interesting. We'll talk about angels another time in, in another discipleship uh, unit. Um, sometimes God speaks in impressions to us. In, in other words, like you kind of hear hear it here you kind of and it and it's really hard to kind of put words on it it's not it's not a it's not a sentence that's in english it's it's a feeling it's an impression and but it but it still makes sense and you still know you know that you know that you know that god has spoken about something sometimes uh god will speak to us in visions 
where we see something, maybe it's something written above somebody else, you know, like a word. Maybe sometimes, you know, we see a picture that means something and, uh, and uh, that might happen. Now, sometimes God speaks to us in dreams as well. Sometimes that's because, um, for me, he often speaks to me in dreams. Maybe he just needs me to be be still and know that I've gone. <laughs> Maybe he needs, he needs to wait till I'm asleep <laughs> before he can speak to me uh, on certain things, certain topics. And so uh, God speaks to us in dreams as well. Um, so and, and 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 he speaks to us in our mind as well. So so we might. I know for me, uh, often I ask a question. As I ask a question, the answer comes right at the end of you know my question, or even like as as a, like as I'm ans- you know asking, and then boom, there's you know, I'm thinking about something for five minutes, I can't think of the answer, and then I say, well, you know, what's that per- God? What's that person's name? Boom, there's the name, and uh, so he he speaks to us like that as well. All right. If you're willing to accept it, you can. You can. You will. You will hear his his voice. And the more you stew that, the more you you look for his voice, the more you'll find it. One of the in, most interesting things that I love about, um, you know, when I, when I've talked, I, I remember this time when I, at scripture when I was teaching scripture, and one of the students said to me, "I really want to hear God's voice, but but I just, you know, I just don't know how to do it." You know, and so I said to him, "Well." Uh, have you got a Bible there? Yeah, like, yeah, I've got a Bible. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't you, why don't you start by reading that? And they're like, oh, no, I don't really want, I don't really want to do that. I'm like, well, how bad do you want to hear his voice? And uh, so his, his, I mean, God, God, um, has already spoken. You know, and if and if we're not interested in what he's already said, why is he going to say anything more? You know, so so one of the things about being a disciple is actually saying, okay, I really want to get, I want to know what he's already said, and then he's going to just continue to speak to you and speak to you and speak to you. I remember, as as I as I memorize scripture, it's funny how supernaturally he reminds me of scriptures that I've not even memorized. So he, the thing is that he 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 gives more to what you steward so what you what you look after he gives you more so if you if you genuinely desire to hear his voice and you act upon that his voice in faith and you you uh you know you you, you he said something and you and you're listening he's going to speak to you more and more and more okay i hope that i hope that makes sense so that's a really important thing to do um and obviously to eagerly desire look the message I gave on Sunday is very important for this too. It's in, about intimacy with God. So sometimes you, if you're not hearing God's voice and you want to, sometimes just enter in a time of worship. Sometimes just, just, just lay before Him and pray. And then, just wait, just wait. And as you worship Him, as you draw near to Him, He promises James four four, James chapter four verse eight. As I draw near to God that, that uh, he promises that he will draw near to us. And so, uh, guys, God bless you. Um, God speaks today still, and it's amazing, and it's life-transforming. And, uh, and so, um, and as a disciple, you know, we can hear his voice. And, in fact, I think it's really something that God um, doesn't just say you, you can, but you actually need to hear his voice. And it's a wonderful thing when he speaks because just one word from God can change absolutely everything. God bless you guys. We'll chat again soon.